and welcome to the University of Kent Centre for Journalism Virtual Open Day. I'm Louise Britton, the news editor at KMTV, and during the next hour or so, we'll be talking to staff, students and graduates of the department to find out more about the university's approach to preparing for a career in multimedia journalism through its undergraduate and postgraduate courses. We'll also be looking at a brand new undergraduate course for students interested in a career in television and digital video production. Remember that this is an interactive session, so you can ask your questions to the Centre for Journalism team at any time during the live, team, live stream, and we'll make sure all those questions are answered by members of the team before we finish. But first, I'd like to introduce the head of the Centre for Journalism, Ian Reeves, uh, who's been at the department since its inception and joins me now. So, Ian, uh, tell us a little bit more about what this virtual Open Day is all about. Um, well, we recognise that this is such a busy time for students and their families who are thinking about applying for their university courses. And sometimes the timetable for our physical open days here on the Medway campus and down on the Canterbury campus just don't fit in with their plans and so what we wanted to do was kind of throw the Centre for Journalism's doors open uh, in a virtual way to, um, to those who are interested in exploring more around uh, studying here and perhaps a career in journalism and so that's that's why we're here. Absolutely and you were here as I mentioned just before right at the start of the department. Uh, what are some of the core values that you hope to kind of achieve here? Well, it was relatively simple. The, the, the idea behind the Centre for Journalism when we opened it up was that we wanted to attract young people from a very diverse set of backgrounds, um, uh, from the UK and internationally, um, who were interested in a career in journalism and make sure that there were no kind of barriers in the way to, to them being able to realise that ambition. And we were going to um, uh, give them uh, a degree level training, but also the professional craft training that they were going to need um, for a, a flourishing career in the industry. Absolutely. And how, how successful do you think the centre's been in achieving those aims? Well, you won't be surprised to, to that my answer is I think we've been extremely successful and that, um, you know, we've got loads of people who are, you, we're going to be hearing from tonight who are essentially testament to that, you know, who came to us um, with an idea that journalism was for them and who are now flourishing in careers uh, literally all around the world. Um, and that really is the, the, the greatest measure for us, is bringing, bringing people into the profession um, and, and letting them fly. And what journalism courses do you actually offer at the centre? So it, it, our, our sort of offer has expanded quite uh, a lot since that very first year. Our core programme was always our undergraduate, three-year undergraduate degree programme, um, professionally accredited by the National Council for the Training of Journalists, and that's... Um, an organisation you'll be hearing quite a lot about tonight because it's so it's so important uh, for uh, for journalists who want a, 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 a career in the industry that, uh, that the training they get is underpinned by the NCTJ. Um, so we have our three-year undergraduate programme. We followed that with a, uh, a one-year taught master's programme, which you know all about because you <laughs> took it yourself. Um, uh, we also have an international uh, uh, programme, which is uh, for students coming from around the world who um, have a who don't need that professional accreditation uh, that UK professional mm -hmm. accreditation, um, but still want to benefit from the um, the very hands-on practical vocational training that we give here. Um, we also now have a year in journalism program, so that's for uh, students from uh, other three-year degrees on the University of Kent who want to, an, to add an extra year to get their professional uh, qualification. Um, and we have a number of joint honours programmes that run down on the Canterbury campus where they get a taster for journalism alongside their, um, their main degree. And then we're launching this new um, degree programme in uh, television and digital video production, uh, more of which we'll hear from uh, about later, which uh, starts in 2020. Absolutely, a huge uh, array of, of programmes there. Thank you for that, Ian. Now, the latest class of BA and MA students from the Centre for Journalism graduated this summer following a Centre for Journalism tradition. Many of them had landed jobs before their graduation ceremony and had to ask for time off to come to the ceremony at Rochester Cathedral. So what did they make of their time at the University of Kent? Can I just say how to be a great journalist? Does that count? Mm, I'm not so sure. Ha, huh, I need to start again. The most important thing um, that I've learned at the Centre for Journalism is how to be confident. Don't stop pursuing the story. This place has 
built up my confidence in a way that I hadn't anticipated. Always keep trying, you're gonna get knocked back from sources, job applications. How far we've come from the very first day when we didn't want to stop people from box popping and we thought that making a phone call was the most terrifying thing in the world to now when we just do it and it's just second nature. Go outside your comfort zone and push your boundaries, you're going to learn some incredible, incredible new skills. The most important thing I've learned is to not leave my work to the last minute. Even if you think you have enough time to do you your don't. work, you really you do don't. not. The most important thing I've learned at the Centre for Journalism is how to become a better writer and really think about the stories I'm telling and the people in the centre of the stories. The thing I'm going to miss the most, weirdly, is the late nights. The night before deadline. <laughs> Just everyone in the in the newsroom collectively losing their mind. Centre for Journalism just brings together so, so many talented young people and amazing lecturers. The Centre for Journalism is a family and that's something that you don't get in, in most places. You know that whenever you need help, there always someone is there to help you. The people, absolutely, it's a big journalistic family. You see this crew of just passionate people who really care about the craft. You can walk around the building and you know people in the corridors and the staff know you and they know what you're up to and they know what you want to become and it just feels like everyone here is behind you and that they want you to do the best that you can possibly do. So if you're tuning in to this, you might already be a keen writer and storyteller. You might have a blog, write for a school newspaper or make YouTube videos about your hobbies and interests. And I'm joined by Director of Education Rob Bailey and 2019 Centre for Journalism graduates Emma Ray Woodhouse and Brad Harper to talk more about how the centre can turn your passion into a writer, in, into a career, I suppose. Um, thanks very much, all three of you, for joining us. Rob, tell us a little bit more about how uh, important it is to be a storyteller in this industry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the kind of person we're looking for, the kind of person we're hoping is tuning in tonight, is a curious person, um, I suppose in every sense of the word, but they have some kind of passion, some kind of interest, whether that's in politics or whether that's in music or sport or fashion or, or whatever, and they want to tell stories about that and they want to consume stories about that. And they'll come to us, and as you've just heard from some of our graduates, that, that amazing video that they shot on their graduation day, what we can teach them is how to take that curiosity and give them the confidence to then explore it. Go out there and really, really get under the skin of a subject and turn that into amazing stories that they want to tell. Absolutely. And Emma, you, you came through, Brad, of course, as well, you came through the Centre for Journalism. How has uh, what you learnt here helped you kind of progress into a career? So a bit like what Rob said there, I think something that the CFJ does is bring confidence to, like you said, sort of amateur writers who just have a little blog or they might have a YouTube channel and you're like, what do I do with this? How do I make this into a platform or a career? And the lecturers at CFJ are really supportive and say, right, you be you, do what you want to do and we can turn this into a career. And people have their own channels and they turn these um, hobbies almost into actual careers and these um, pieces that they do end up um, going out here at KMTV or they go out at KMFM or Kent Online and it's helping turn that hobby and giving you the confidence to make it into an actual career and I'm grateful for that. Absolutely and Brad you did the MA at the CFJ as well, how have some of the skills you learned here helped you? Well it gets you out there straight away, I mean I think one of the first sessions we had was going out, um, I think we ended up going to ASDA <laughs> And we ended up getting a story out of that. Um, and understandably, people are nervous when they first talk on the phone, um, which is one of the key skills we sort of learn here. And I think getting on the phone, getting out there and getting stuck in was one of the most important skills we were, we were taught here. And that has really carried over into our my job and I presume your job as well. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, Rob, and more specifically, what are some of the skills that students at the CFJ will learn? So, as, as you've already heard tonight, it's important the, the, our relationship with the National Council for the Training of Journalists who teach how to gather news, how to do so ethically, how to go out and interview people, how to attend a council meeting or attend a courtroom and to come away with an accurate set of notes and an idea of what the story is of what you've just seen. And everything that we do is, is essentially about that practical engagement, getting out there, meeting people, witnessing events, and then coming back and turning that into some captivating copy, television or whatever. And Emma, do you think that the centre's quite good at helping you specialise? Obviously you work in TV now and Brad, you work at the papers. Uh, do you find that you, they, you were able to kind of specialise in one type of... 
they yeah, do. one of my favourite things about the centre was that that option was there to specialise in anything. You know, if you want to go into radio, do it. You want to go into TV, do it. Papers, magazines, the options are there. Um, I chose to go into TV and broadcast, but it's also got a digital side to it too. Mm. And I managed to do that because of what I learned, and then I could apply that to anywhere I want. I got to try it all and pick my favourites. So. And, and Brad, how about you? How did it help? Well, you? I'm a huge fan of print and online journalism, and it definitely and human interest stories. I'm a huge fan of those. Um, and definitely with Rob's help, um, that helped me go towards that something I specialised in and really enjoyed doing. Um, and was really allowed to thrive here doing my human interest story. So yeah, I would just, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, well it sounds like we've had a nice insight into how the CFJs helped you with those journalism skills as well. Thank you all three for joining us. And now from September 2020, you'll also be able to study TV and digital video production at the University of Kent. This new programme will allow undergraduate students to explore all the skills they'll need to jump straight into the industry, whether it's working for a traditional broadcaster like ITV, for a production company, or even new players in the creative industry such as Netflix. To learn a bit more about what you can expect, we can cross live now to the Centre for Journalism's newsrooms, which is where a lot of the departments teaching it takes place. Keelan Webster's there for us now. So, Keelan. Yeah, evening to you, Louisa. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, pleased to say that I'm joined by the television production lecturer, Laura Garcia, as well as Oliver Kemp, who took part in the module. Um, thanks very much to both of you. Laura, I'll come to you first. Just tell us a bit more about what people can expect watching at home today from the module. So from the module and from the new degree that we're going to be teaching as of September next year, you can expect to get a whole range of skills. TV production has all these different layers from handling cameras, editing video, organizing budgets, organizing locations, logistics, actors, casting, um, your graphics. And the idea of the module and the TV de production degree is that you'll get a taste of all of it to figure out what it is that you really like. And so that if when you go into the industry, you can kind of navigate everywhere and find your own way and your own specialism. And Ollie, just give us an insight into how television production has, has helped you and, and helped your job so far. Um, well, I think one of the biggest things I learned from it was collaboration, because well, we sat down with Laura on the first day, and it's like, right, you're going to make a TV show now. And that's, that's a big deal. You're thinking, well, how am I going to make this look like it's unique for a start? So it's about uh, thinking about who you're going to work with, how's the show going to look, what sort of colours am I going to use? Um, and Laura used the expression cat herding. <laughs> And maybe because she loves cats, but it's, a, it's it, in, in all seriousness, well, yeah, in all seriousness, it's difficult to try and bring all those elements together and make sure everyone's going to be there on the right day. Um, and I think just having the pressure of having to get that done really pushed me to, to create that project. And Laura, obviously one of the exciting things about uh, next year is going to be the new degree, which is coming in. Give us an insight into what sort of things you'll be teaching during that. So, obviously, because we have three years instead of a, a year, you have w way more time to go into specific advanced tricks of lighting, editing, a lot more on the ethics and the law of what it takes to produce a TV show. So there's a lot involved in pitching something to, for example, Channel 4 or ITV, and we're going to go through those steps in a very practical way, um, embedded also with work experience in different places. And the idea, again, is to is to learn by doing this kind of stuff is like riding a bike. I can explain to you 50 billion times how much work it's going to take you to get three guests in a studio. But until you do it, and they stop answering to your emails, and then they don't text you back, and then you don't know if they're on their train, and you have to make sure that they're there, and you have to fight with the graphic designers to make sure they get stuff there on time, and then your edit crashes halfway through, you don't learn it until you do it. And that's kind of the whole point of the new degree. And, Ollie, you were just mentioning a moment ago about, the, I suppose, the excitement, but kind of fear almost about putting that, the, the whole show together. But that must give you, it must be exciting, as I, as I mentioned, to have that freedom to put a, a show together and almost model it yourself. Yeah, completely, because I think a lot of what we do here at CFJ is learning the, uh, understanding the building blocks of news and how news looks. And actually, with, with the TV production module, I was able to kind of go outside the standard TV news look and think, actually, how would I want to make a show look? And that gave me a lot of freedom, the freedom that you wouldn't necessarily have before. So thinking about the music, the graphics, thinking about the guests and how you might approach the guests, uh, all those things that now I feel like I can approach people in my real job and, uh, and, I, and I know how to approach them and know how to create a product. And you took part in the Masters last year. What was the best thing that you got out of that, you would say? I think it's about managing time. You know, we, the master's course is intense, and you do a lot in what is effectively nine months. But I came out of that and went straight into a newsroom, and I didn't feel, I didn't feel as pressured as I would have if I hadn't been here, because I felt like I was prepared to be in a newsroom and, and tell the news. And Laura, what, finally, what would be your piece of 
advice, information released to people watching at home about television production and how they should engage with it? I would say everyone's story is worth telling. So regardless of where you come from, where you, what you look like, what your family's from, what you want to talk about, everybody's story is worth telling, and we need more people to step up and tell the stories of their communities, and that's what we're here for. I want to help people make shows about fashion and cats and tech and weird gaming things and board games and politics and different countries around the world, and the more voices that we add to the industry, the better it's going to get. So if you kind of think, oh, you know what, I'd really like to do Bake Off, but with different kinds of food, go for it. We're here to help you make it, and you're never going to learn unless you try it. So much variety to both of you. Thanks ever so much indeed. We can get an example now of what it's like uh, to take part in the television production module. Holly Tibwell graduated from the Centre for Journalism in the summer and has already secured a job which sees her help produce the likes of Grand Designs and Gogglebox. Here's what she had to say about her show she produced in the module as well as how it helped her get on the first rung of the television ladder. Hi, I'm Holly Tidwell. I graduated from the University of Kent in 2019, and now I work at Envy Post Productions. Sometimes hard drives come in for like Gogglebox, Bake Off, Grand Designs. I log them into our system and I take them wherever they need to go. I pretty much just help with what anything anyone needs. For my final year project, I created a TV show called Art Fuse, and my goal for it was to create a structured TV, almost newsy show, like a chat show, but I wanted it to contain elements in a show that never existed before, so it really focused on the importance of art education, but in a really entertaining and humorous way. Hulk smash! Look at that! Look at this! Look at this! Can you believe this? They're not quite done yet, and I can't wait to see what they come up with tomorrow. To get into television, I'd say you need two things. Perseverance is one. You need to annoy people, prove you have the right to be there, show people you want to be there so they'll hire you. And the second thing is practice. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know the technical terms. You need to know what to do with the cameras, what to do with the hard drives. So you need to study it and understand how it works. Otherwise, people won't want to hire you because you have no experience. Day one is over, and as you can see, our artists have completely destroyed the office space. But let's see if they can turn this mess into something beautiful. Making TV, you meet a lot of different people, from talented actors to people who sit behind computers all day editing, to people who are willing to stand 100 feet in the air to film something. So it's a big, wide net of people, and you're all together trying to make this one thing. When my TV show came together, I felt very proud of myself. I felt prepared, like I could leave university, go into the real world, and make something just like the same as that. I could actually do it, and now I'm doing it. Remember that viewers of our live stream can send in questions using the chat box on the YouTube page. We'll try to get as many of them as we can answered before we run out of time this evening. Now, with any published work, whether it's a newspaper story, a radio broadcast, a television show, or even just a tweet, there are legal and ethical pitfalls waiting for every, at every turn for the unwary journalist. That's an important part of what students learn at the Centre for Journalism. And we're joined now by Dave Aitchison, lecturer in media law, as well as Amy Nichols who graduated from the CFJ in 2015 is now a news editor at Kent Online. So thanks very much for both of us uh, joining us this evening. Uh, Dave, first of all, what kind of things uh, do journalists need to be aware about when it comes to media law? Well, there are a whole range of different mm -hmm. things that um, we'll talk about in the media law part of the course. Um, and it could be anything from an investigative journalist who uh, comes up against official secrets laws that prohibit the publication of national security secrets to a local reporter who wants to know um, what can and can't be reported from particular types of trials at the local magistrate's court. Um, and then you've got the uh, perennial uh, issues or potential issues with defamation, uh, invasion of privacy and increasingly data protection law as well. Absolutely. Amy, you were, uh, when you graduated, you were a reporter first for the Medway Messenger and now a news editor at Kent Online. Obviously, this is something that crops up quite often on a day-to-day -day basis. Always, constantly. I think sometimes it's just doing the course here, etc. You, It's knowing that those things you have to think about. So even if you're not sure what it is, if you think, I remember learning that and I remember that I need to be careful about it, it's coming back and talking to your editor and being like, can I tread this way? And they'll say, yes, that's fine, or no, stay away. So, yeah, having that, that core knowledge is really helpful, whether you're a reporter or an editor, all the way through. 
Uh, obviously, working online and, and print as well, but Dave, something that's taught in the CFJ as well is Ofcom regulations when it comes to television and broadcast as well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, broadcast, that's TV and radio, um, is subject to Ofcom regulation, which is a lot more detailed, a lot more precise, and quite often a lot more demanding than um, the regulations that are applied to newspapers. So <clears throat> both um, broadcasters and newspapers need to think about things like privacy. So we've recently seen um, Princess Meghan uh, announced that she's going to sue the Mail on Sunday for publishing a letter that she'd privately written to her father. That's the kind of thing that broadcasters also need to take into account. Um, but broadcasters also need to think about things like product placement, um, uh, accuracy, which is something that newspapers don't necessarily have to take into account. Um, so there are a broader range of uh, ethical and regulatory concerns that may be um, people working in TV need to think about. Absolutely, and having uh, done the course, Amy, you know all about NCTJ as well, and there's quite a, a heavy uh, me uh, media law um, segment in that as well. How much has that helped you? So much. I think it means you can go and do those stories, because if if you're... The court stuff is the interesting stuff, if we're going to be honest. If you, <laughs> if you can cover a murder, as sad as it is, it's really interesting to follow. So if you can be trusted by your editor because you've got your NCTJ and because you've done the law stuff, you can go out and do those stories, and, yeah, like I said, they're great ones to get involved with. And if you don't have that sound legal background, you're not going anywhere near court. It's just not going to happen. Absolutely. Well, great to get both your insights on that aspect of the course. Thank you very much. You. Now, Centre for Journalism students have a habit of getting jobs straight after graduating. One of those is Brad Gray, who has been working for Essex Live since he left university this summer. Here's his story. Hi, my name is Brad Gray. I work for EssexLive.news uh, and I finished studying at the Centre for Journalism in 2019. I got a job pretty much straight out of university. They were very impressed with the training that I had at the CFJ. I currently work for a local regional news site, uh, which also publishes many local papers. It's meant that I've managed to get bylines uh, in multiple papers within two months of working here. In my first couple months, I've interviewed the Chief Superintendent of Essex Police, I've reviewed pub gardens, I've deep fried Greg's food and reviewed it, and then I've just done some really good quality local journalism, which I know is going to benefit people who it's about. The CFJ is a brilliant place to learn how to be a journalist and do what you want to do and find out what you want to be. The experience of being able to do so many different things in such a short space of time has allowed me to find my niche and uh, I'm very, very happy. And now we're going to go back to Keelan in the newsroom to talk about some of the fascinating projects that students can create as part of their studies. So, Keelan. We're going to be discussing the final year projects uh, now. I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Richard Pendry, who is a Director of Graduate Studies, and also Boglaka Costolani, who graduated a couple of years ago and is now going to freelance for CNN. So, uh, Richard, I'll come to you first. The final year projects, give us an insight into what they're about. Okay, so the final year projects are for the undergraduate students and basically it's their chance to show off all the stuff that we've taught them. So they can do TV, radio, print or online, but they're kind of big projects. So it's like they start in September and then they give it to us in April. Uh, they're like a kind of people, people do a 15-minute TV program, half an hour TV program, half an hour radio program. So they're kind of long-form journalism. And basically it's a chance to do some proper journalism over a period of months where you get a chance to spend time with your characters, you know, the people in interesting situation, in a, in a, you know, follow them in their, in their lives, for example. That's what a lot of people do. And Boglaka, you were one of the people that uh, undertook the third year project. Tell us what it was about. Um, so my project was an interactive multimedia piece, and it looked at the rise of populism in Hungary through Holocaust survivors' eyes. And uh, basically, it used like various elements like words, stills, uh, video, 360 video, infographics, and um, I basically spent six months talking to Holocaust survivors, and then um, yeah, and then I created my piece um, with the help of my 
teachers. And just tell us about that. How did the staff help you when it came to putting the uh, project together? Um, yeah, so initially this wasn't, this wasn't my pitch, so my pitch was completely different. But then um, when I, I basically I just spent a lot of time sp speaking to these Holocaust survivors, and then I came back with a completely different story, and then the staff really encouraged me to go for that one. So we completely changed the storyline, and then, um, yeah, and uh, I mean, I was quite happy with it in the end, and we won the um, Student Project of the Year award. And what advice would you give to uh, other third-year students about undertaking the project and um, what's the right way to go about it? I think the right way to go about it is just to spend a lot of time with your um, case studies, just speak to them, and then sometimes, sometimes like a completely different story emerges and you just and it's a much better story than what you initially were going for so yeah I just put in the time and then just think about different ways of illustrating your uh, story and um, yeah just um, just go for it and Richard in a moment we're gonna see a little clip from a third year student called Michael Haffenden talk us through his project okay so Michael Haffenden is this uh, kind of auto sport nerd basically which is how he describes himself on Twitter so he basically, his whole life is he loves motor car racing, every, all that stuff that I don't understand and don't follow. Um, but he basically, he did this TV film, which is a documentary that I would have been really proud to have made myself. And that, we, there are loads of things in it which I did not teach him. But he just did this fantastic piece of work which follows a group of uh, servicemen, ex-servicemen who've been injured typically in Iraq or Afghanistan. Um, and they've got, they've, what a part of their rehabilitation is that they have a motor racing team. So he just basically follows them in their lives and as they go through tournaments, and it's an amazing piece of work. We've all been to points in our life where we could have given up and, and just settled for, for what we had, but <clears throat> we've all got the attitude of never give up because you never know what's, what's gonna come up next. It's more than just driving though, it's more than just getting to the finishing line first. There's, there's a bigger thing happening at Team Brit. Laying in bed in Queen Elizabeth Hospital with both legs missing, I never would have thought I'd have been doing anything like this. You feel like your life's on the edge pretty much, whether you're out on patrol or you're in the car, it's still going to hurt if, you, if it goes wrong, so it's what you live for, it's what I, what I love. So if you've got a choice now, it says that you can, you can be a passenger the rest of your life, or you can get the driver's seat of your, of, your, of your life and take your life where you want to take it. is back with me along with second year undergraduates journalism student Anna Broderick to talk more about the admissions process this is something that lots of students I'm sure will be very intrigued to hear a bit more about that uh, about this uh, this evening so Adam what was the process for you getting on the course like well I just applied from UK on the UCAS mm -hmm. website from my uh, grammar school board and, and uh, I came here had a look around I thought this is a really nice place a very friendly staff so I thought I'd apply in terms of the admissions process, what are you really looking for when it comes to students that you see? Um, we look at them in the round. So one of the things that is unique about the admissions process of the Centre for Journalism is that we, um, we won't make an offer without seeing the student. So we interview and, uh, and do a little test. It's not, not a frightening test, but we do a test to make sure that we're confident that they can get through the National Council for the Training of Journalism exams. So after Adam ap applied, he would have been, been invited to yeah. a selection day mm -hmm. yeah, um, where he'll have come and, and, and sat down and chatted to, to one of us um, and he'll have done his test. And we'll, have, uh, we'll ask you a variety of questions about why journalism was for you and the kind of journalist you wanted to be, I, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I did talk a lot about uh, my English and sociology and stuff, and it was quite nice. It was just a general chat, really. It wasn't anything too serious. It was just, you know, why did I want to do what I well, applied to journalism? And I just, it's always something I want to do. No, because I remember when I, when I originally applied, you had a bit of a test as well. It can <laughs> be quite nerve-wracking for students when they hear of a selection open day, I suppose. Um, what are some of the tips that you might be able to offer for prospective students? Uh, I'd probably just say have a brief look at current affairs, but other than that, it's just about testing your writing ability. But, of course, that 
comes on, it gets developed a lot more after first year, like during first year. So as long as you just have a basic grasp of English and like news writing, you should be good basically. And what what that enables us to do that um, that direct interaction with all of the with all of our applicants, it enables us to tailor the offer directly to the student because we get these days. Uh, applications from students with all sorts of different academic backgrounds. So some from the traditional A-level route, we get IB students, we get students with a combination now of BTEC qualifications and, and others. It enables us to do to give tailored offers to individual students. And we also recognise that it's not necessarily the, the most academically high-flying students who are going to make the best journalists. And that means that we can um, uh, recognise the kind of innate um, nosiness, if you like, the, the sort of innate journalism qualities in individual students and um, you know they may not be at that top end of the academic spectrum but we can make an offer that works for them. Absolutely and, and there's also I gather new plans for communicating with applicants this year as well. Yes, we've got quite an exciting new uh, process where we're, by we're, we're going to be sending personalised individual video messages to our applicants as soon as they uh, as, as soon as they come to us. So they'll get uh, they'll get a direct um, kind of sort of feeling of, of what it's like being as part part of what we call the the centre for journalism family. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for some more insight into the admissions process. And uh, now we're heading back uh, to Keelan in the newsroom, where he's going to get some question and answers uh, for you. Uh, so, Keelan. Yeah, thanks very much for been sending in. Uh, there's Steve. There he goes across the camera. Uh, thanks very much for sending in your uh, questions. Uh, keep them coming in. We've got uh, three students here alongside me now, Alexandra, Aya and Isabel. Alexandra, I'll come to you first. Um, one question we've had coming in from Instagram. Uh, what key skills do you learn at the CFJ? What would you say to that? I think, I think the biggest thing is that you basically learn to just go for it and do it. And, yeah, if you need to, like, pick up the phone, then just do it, like... You don't hesitate, you just do what you need to do to get the story. Absolutely sound advice. And what are the biggest advantages you think I owe to coming to the Centre for Journalism? Um, it really gets you into the comfort zone, so they don't really push you too hard, but they push you enough so that you feel confident in your skills, but still um, don't like get into like a panic zone. OK, I'm just going to watch the wires here, because that'll go viral if I trip over there. Uh, why do you think, Isabel, we should uh, study journalism and uh, as a degree and not just go into it after university. That comes from YouTube. Well, I, I believe that it's better to study as a degree because you learn how to use all the equipment. You have amazing lectures here, and you really just get comfortable, you know, <laughs> learning everything here. It's amazing. Absolutely. OK, I'll come back, Alexandra. Just give us an insight uh, for international students who might be watching. What experiences uh, is it for international students on the course? Well, everyone's really friendly. It's uh, The whole CFJ is basically like a family. So you always have someone to turn to, and even if you don't have, like, um, actual family here, you still feel like uh, you're surrounded with people who care about you. So, yeah, all the lecturers know your name. It's not like, it's not like there's a hundred of us and they don't even know who you are. So, yeah, it's really nice. They're really personal. And I, would you, would you say the same? Is it, do you feel like a, it's almost like a CFJ family in here at times? It really is, because there's such small numbers in the course. Like, you kind of just know everyone, and you're kind of close with everyone. OK, well, there we go. Plenty of creep questions coming in, and uh, we'll be having plenty of answers later on from various lecturers and students. I'll see you in a bit. So, to get more of a flavour of what goes on at the CFJ, we're joined by two recent graduates who have great jobs already. Rachel Dixon, who's a reporter and award-winning columnist for the Medway Messenger, and Alfie Tobert, who graduated in 2018 and is now working on producing news for smart speakers for the BBC. Also here is Angela Harrison, who teaches reporting and writing at the CFJ. Uh, so we're going back to that all-important skill of storytelling. Uh, Rachel, for, for, just to start off, um, what are some of the skills that you learned at the CFJ that you now are able to kind of bring into your job? As I mentioned there, award-winning columnist. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I would say definitely quite a lot of what we learned at CFJ was where to source your stories from. I remember when we did reporting and writing, which is probably the lesson that I use most now, um, the lecturer Rob Bailey would sort of show us how to go online and like social media and find little Facebook groups that are local to where we are where we'd be able to find stories and talk to people um, and just sort of like the key terms that you would search to be able to find people and use like that. 
Um, but also, um, I thought it was quite important the way you got to live through like council agendas um, and sort of talk to the police and um, things that were going on in court. I thought that was really helpful as well. And Angela, you, you came to the CFJ after a long career at the BBC. Um, what, what made you want to be a journalist, first of all? Well, I think like perhaps a lot of people around here and at the centre, it was perhaps writing. I loved writing. I loved reading. I'd always do that a lot. And I think I've picked that up from a lot of our students. And um, for me, growing up in London, my mum and dad used to run a pub and uh, some of the reporters from the Standard used to come into the mm -hmm. pub. And um, so my dad would say, oh, look, yeah, look at this article. And I, I just used to really love reading newspapers and I would read everything. And then I began to think, yeah, that looks like a really interesting job. And that was when I was really young at primary school. And I think it just planted a seed and it stayed it ever since. Absolutely. Well, as we've had a really interesting career, but also quite a competitive one, Alfie, what are some of your tips for people trying to get break into the industry, I suppose? Um, I'd say you just have to be confident and you just have to put yourself out there. It's, with, it's the same with a lot of things, I suppose, that you have to be willing to do things that you might not be comfortable with necessarily or might, be not, might not be familiar with. Um, you just have to be willing to... Uh, I suppose a big part of journalism is talking to people and making connections and journalism as a career relies heavily on knowing the right people and knowing people in different professions, not just journalism. And so I think knowing the right people, um, meet, being willing to meet people, or step out of your comfort zone, um, and also to just start whenever, even if you're just at uni, even if you've just mm -hmm. started in your first year at uni, it's not too early to start. Uh, if you want to start writing or if you want to you know, start a YouTube channel or a podcast or whatever, you can do it all, especially here at the Centre for Journalism, because you have all those facilities and resources available to you. Absolutely. And Angela, you teach reporting and writing. Uh, more specifically, what, what does that involve? Well, it kind of involves everything, really, going from the first time you get sent out to do a vox pop, how to go out and interview the members of the public, right up to crafting quite big stories, involved stories that involve speaking to different different people, and then just applying your mind to it, really, sifting out what's the truth there. So we teach a lot of the practical skills and also a lot of skills that are about um, the thought behind it, if you like, so that, as long as, so that we want to be ethical, we want to be truthful, and so we're kind of putting things through a bit of a sifting process, if you like, distilling it into what you see on the paper or hear on the radio. And, and Rachel, obviously you work at the Medway Messenger now, um, and obviously you've got Came TV, which is based here at the university. How important is it that there are those connections with the, the industry within CFJ and a bit slightly further beyond? Oh, it's actually it's brilliant. Um, I think the uni really, really helped me like step straight into the Medway Messenger because there are really good connections with the lecturers who used to work at the paper um, here at KMTV. Everyone is really close. I call you guys, as you know, every day. <laughs> um, and then it, that's also really good because we can have written stories, but we can put video in, audio. It's great. And then I also still get to practice um, like taking video and audio when my like primary role is to write. So it's great. Absolutely, and, and Alfie as well, some of those um, multimedia skills, I'm sure they come in very handy as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that's one of the things that sets this course or this centre apart from other courses is the fact that you do radio, TV, print and online. You get to specialise in everything. So when you step out into the workplace after you graduate, you can say, right, well, what do I want to do really? Because I have so many options here um, and I now work in what's essentially radio or audio. Um, and I have all the skills, obviously we use different software, but all the skills that I sort of have, I got from here, from creating radio packages or when I did my project um, and things like that. So everything, all the skills that you learn here are transferable over to the workplace really easily. Absolutely. Well, great to hear a bit more about your experiences. Uh, and moving on, another CFJ grand at Flying High is former Came TV intern Ayo Ali. Ayo applied to study journalism without telling her parents, got in through clearing, and is now working with Little War Productions as a research assistant on a TV show. Hi, my name's Ayo. I've just graduated from the Centre for Journalism in 2019. I haven't always wanted to be a journalist. I came in through clearing and my mum wanted me to be a lawyer. I applied for journalism behind her back and then when I got accepted to come for an interview, then I told her that, oh mum, there's this journalism thing that I could do, you know. I've always loved the art of like telling my story or someone else's story. Especially coming from my background, I don't see a lot of my stories being told. So I'm definitely passionate about bringing a lot of BAME and black stories to the limelight and being kind of um, 
representation as well is kind of very important to me. So I always knew that when whatever I did, I had to represent properly. For the past year, I've just been working at ANTV and learning um, how to build my confidence. One of the first things I learned about my internship at KMTV was the interview process. I've just learned how to kind of talk to people in the newsroom, say I'm ready to help, tell me what to do, or also give um, ideas on what I can do as well. Yeah, welcome back to the Centre for Journalism newsroom where we're taking a look at tech, technology playing an increasingly important role in journalists' toolkit. I'm joined now by Steve Senior, who is the man all things tech here at the CFJ alongside Laura Garcia. So, Steve, we've got some, uh, lots of tech lined up here. Just take us through a couple of bits. Well, what we've got here is uh, we've got our port portable vision mixer system, uh, which we can uh, use anywhere, can uh, deploy up to eight cameras with it. Uh, normally we use it with four. Uh, we've got some mobile phone gimbals, sa uh, sound mixing desks, portable auto queue system should we need to take, uh, take a studio out into the field. Uh, got, a, got a gimbal system for shooting on iPhones. Uh, what we're looking at now is using uh, the power of the iPhone as, uh, as a news gathering tool. So the, uh, the gimbal stabilizes the shots, so you can do walking shots and still have them stable. And uh, we've got Alina over there presenting the weather on a Chrome Creek. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, Laura, I mentioned it just at the top there, it's become increasingly important tech for, for journalists. Just explain to people at home why that might be. Well, because these little things, our phones, are the biggest tool that we have, both to tell stories and to find them, right? So most people won't necessarily go out and buy a newspaper, won't necessarily sit at home at 10 and watch the news, but they'll interact with news through their phone. And the same goes for television shows. Nobody necessarily watches TV anymore. You stream onto different screens. And understanding that broadcasting is about screens rather than televisions is really important, both in how we make stuff and how we interact with it. So little things like this, for example, this is a 360-degree video camera. As a journalist before, I would have had to write 3,000 words to describe what it's like to be on the Turkish-Syrian border right now. If I were to get there and put this camera there, I don't have to describe it anymore. You can see for yourself. And you can look around and you can interact. And learning those kind of new storytelling techniques and narrative languages is really, really, really important. And Steve, just give us another bit of insight into some of the key bits of tech that students here at the CFJ get to use throughout their, their years at the centre. Well, we're equipped uh, with, uh, I think we have about 80 TV camera kits. Uh, and the whole idea is that really from day one, they go out and start using, using the TV cameras, um, learn how to use them, uh, bring, the, bring the shots back, edit them, and learn to storytell using pictures. Uh, it's all about storytelling. Um, and over, 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 over a period of time, they practice with them. We encourage them to use them. I mean, if, if, if it's grandma's 80th birthday, well, go and, shoot, go and shoot grandma's 80th birthday. Come back, edit the pictures. The more you use the kit, the better you get with it. And the better you get with it, the better your final year project is. Uh, I'm always there for help. I'm always there for advice. If you're not sure about anything, you know, we encourage everybody to come and ask, come and talk to us, uh, you know, it's overwhelming for some people, you know, the, 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 suddenly having thousands of pounds worth of tech <laughs> put in front of you and say, there you go, go make a story with that. Well, you know, ask, learn, use it, practice. Uh, you know, there are guys that work with, with uh, the local football club that uh, go out and shoot the matches, uh, which did they use af afterwards for the, not only the social media, but for analysis of the match as well. So, uh, you know, there's a lot we can play with. We have uh, two fully equipped radio studios. Uh, so, again, one of the things we do is uh, teach um, radio news and radio news bulletins and how to operate, an, uh, how, how to operate a radio news studio, uh, which, not only for the radio news, but multimedia projects, you might, wanna, you might want to do a phone interview with somebody. So you sit in the radio studio, ring someone up, record an interview, then once you've got that audio, transcribe it, use, use it as part of your multimedia project. Uh, and with a, with a whole series, well, toys, really, <laughs> for news going. And, um, Laura, a minute, ago, a minute ago you mentioned about the importance of the, of the iPhone as a news-gathering tool. Sort of coming up into this world now where people coming into the centre have been growing up with social media. How much of an important tool is that? Well, it's the one thing that young people have going into the industry, right? When you're competing for a job with someone who's been in the industry 20 years and has all the experience in the world, what you've got going for you is that people assume that you're digitally native, that you understand Twitter, that you understand Instagram, and more importantly, that you are going to be able to adapt to whatever comes afterwards. 
that you will have those digital skills to migrate. Like uh, we all remember, um, like I don't know, I used to use ICQ as a messaging service when it started, but because I knew that, I could move on to the next technology and I could understand WhatsApp. And that bit of storytelling and understanding that it's a different language and that it's not something to look down on. Telling stories in Instagram in 10 seconds per frame is actually really hard. Telling a story and condensing a tweet into 240 characters is actually really hard. And it's a practice thing. And like Steve was saying, whether it's your granny's 80th or an actual project, you learn by messing up. Sometimes I remember the first time I went to an interview and I didn't plug the microphone right. I thought I'd done everything perfect, went back to edit, and my video had no sound. I have never forgotten to turn on a microphone ever again in my life. And sometimes those mistakes, you need to make them. And making them here at university where you can ask for advice, where your job isn't on the line, is really important because you take those skills with you forward. Yeah, absolutely. And if you do have any questions for Steve or Laura about any of these little, little bits of tech, then don't hesitate to get involved and we'll answer those a little bit later on. Louisa, all yours. Now, on top of learning how to tell powerful stories through journalism or television, the Centre for Journalism is also a great place to do research. We're joined now by the CFJ's Director of Research, Dr Ben Cocking, and Laura Trussell, who's writing a PhD on political communications and journalism. Thank you both of you for joining us this evening. Ben, first of all, um, learning how to do academic research is, is really important for anyone uh, doing a university degree. How important is it? I mean, I think, I think it's a very important um, set of skills that students gain through, through doing research. We've heard quite a lot this evening so far about how students on our degree courses mm -hmm. encounter a lot of sort of practical skills that help them in the, in the industry of, of journalism. Um, but alongside that, we also teach them quite a lot about the relationship between journalism and politics, um, journalism and history. So they learn a lot about how the media industries in this country have evolved and changed over time and I think introducing research to our students helps them see that, that journalism like many other academic subjects is, is very dynamic, it's ever changing and there are lots of very fascinating areas that they can go on to explore. So our undergraduates and our master students get the opportunity to do a dissertation with us and that gives them an opportunity to really sort of delve into an area of journalism that they're very interested in. Um, and in doing that, they get a lot of skills that are very useful for them in a number of um, uh, forms of employment when they, when they graduate. So they learn how to do a lot of independent work, a lot of investigative skills. They learn how to, to find out elements of the, of the research that they're trying to explore, um, as well as things like time management um, and sort of planning and structuring um, their, their work and so on. So it gives them a really good range of skills. Absolutely, and Laura, you did the MA first of all, and now you're uh, working on your PhD. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, I enjoyed the dissertation bit so much that I decided to carry it on, and I'm looking at newspapers in the 2017 campaign and how Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn presented and the ways in which they were maybe positively or negatively portrayed in the newspapers. And what are some of the skills that you've learned through doing this academic research that potentially could be applicable in the field but also further furthering your career? Definitely time management, mm. <laughs> so balancing like work as well as the research itself, um, how to write in an engaging way as well. Um, more academically literature reviews and stuff like that, so referencing um, project management and also looking at how a newspaper is structured as well, so what a lead story is and front page stories and where they appear in the newspaper and how important that is to the audience as well. Absolutely. And Ben, what sort of um, support is there for people wanting to do more research when it comes to the University of Kent and CFJ? Um, well, th there's a lot of support that we give give our students who, who are do, doing research. I mean, as part of doing their dissertations, they, they're allocated a, a supervisor who uh, works with them on a one-to-one -one basis through, throughout the whole year um, so that they have a, usually kind of weekly um, meetings with, 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 with their supervisors that enable them really to, to kind of keep their projects on, on track. Um, the, the university is very well resourced in terms of you know, library facilities um, and a lot of the, the kind of research training skills that students might, might need as, as well. Um, so there's, there's lots of outside of the, the Centre for Journalism across the university more widely, there's, there's lots of areas of support that students can draw on too. Absolutely, well, fantastic to hear a bit more about the other side of, of the work that's being done at the CFJ. Thank you both for joining us.
Now, Larka Christensen graduated from the centre last year and for her initial year, final year, sorry, she opted to write a dissertation on the way news is presented through podcasts. She now works as an assistant news editor for ITV News and here how she's uh, here she's talking about how her research has helped her in her current job. <laughs> Hello, my name is Laika Christensen and I graduated from the CFJ in July 2019. I think that as stories get ever more complicated, it's nothing but a good thing to be able to employ your journalistic and your academic skills when you're trying to tell a story. My research dissertation was about news values in podcasts. I wanted to work out if producers of daily news podcasts use the same news values that their more traditional newspaper colleagues do. By doing a research dissertation, I think I learned that I can write things that are longer than a tweet or longer than an article, and I still do have the skills that it takes to sort of really dig into a topic and really understand it. After graduating, I've started work at ITV News in London and the Embassy of Denmark in the UK. These are two very different jobs, but that's actually kind of great because I feel like I get to use both sides of the skills that I learned at the CFJ. And of course, across the University of Kent, you can get involved in different student groups and associations, whatever your passions or interests. There'll be lots of students who can share that with you. Now, if you want to tell stories on television, then KTV, the university's student-run television station, is just for you. Well, back in the newsroom, uh, Keelan's joined by Ayomikam Adikayero, uh, who's part of KTV's Medway chapter. Tell us a bit more about KTV. Yes, I'm joined by Io and Alina, both uh, who are involved in the Medway side of KTV. Just give us a bit more of an insight first Io, as to what KTV is all about. KTV is a student television society which um, imitates a TV station, so we come up with our own shows to publish on Facebook and YouTube. And Alina, give us an insight into some of the shows that you do. So we do everything from entertainment to sports to even more serious subjects and last year we even had a fashion show going on this year we're trying to get the community more involved especially the students and the lecturers so we started with 73 questions by Vogue but in a CFJ kind of style so anything that will entertain the students and the teachers will do it. And uh, talk to us a bit about Medway and the Medway side of KTV. Um, so the Medway side we have our own branch so we have a committee which is like <coughs> the uh, one in Canterbury, and we kind of have people in roles for entertainment, sports, and news. Um, we can also collaborate sometimes with Canterbury, um, but mostly we have our own shows here. And Alina, what would you say to people about encouraging them to get involved with KTV? Well, first of all, if you want to study journalism, you should probably get involved because it gives you a great insight into what journalism is like, what is filming like, meeting people, going out there and really trying to put as much as you, of your effort as you can. And uh, also it's just great fun and it's a great community and you'll always have something to do and meet new people and just enjoy yourself here. And I, how can people get involved with KTV? Well, you can like us on Facebook on KTV Medway. There's also a store which will be happening at Freshers' Fair where you can sign up to get involved. And if you want to, you could also get involved with events at Canterbury. And what would you say are the, are the main things that KTV tried to promote throughout the university? Um, I think it just tries to promote um, people to have fun with like filming, get involved, creating their own shows, that type of stuff. And uh, Lena, what would you say is your favourite part about being part of KTV? I think it's just working collaboratively with other students and lecturers, but especially students, because it's just like a family here at CFJ, and we all have fun doing everything together, and obviously learning how to use all the tools and use your own skills and see them develop throughout your experience is always great. And as part of the Centre for Journalism, how much has that helped you going into KTV and vice versa? I think the doing journalism and doing KTV is like really helpful because you get to use the skills, camera skills, editing skills a bit more and then you get used to it so therefore they're more, they're better so when you use it for your actual projects you actually um, know what you're doing. I suppose as well, you know, because it is run by the students, you get a, a chance to do a bit of everything, a bit of producing, a bit of presenting. Yeah, 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 definitely. You get to do producing, presenting, directing, even like being in front of the camera, which is really cool because you get to do everything and explore all parts of journalism and see what you prefer. 
And just finally, just give us, I suppose, a, a bit of a feeling as to how the lecturers can help you and how they promote KTV and encourage you to take part in it. Well, the lecturers are really helpful. They let us use all like the equipment, especially Steve. Um, and then they also give us tips when it comes to certain like events. Like I remember when we were doing a video for a music show last year, Steve like gave us a lot of tips to do with how to set it up. So they're really helpful in that respect. OK, so guys, thank you ever so much indeed. So if you do want to get involved in KTV, that's how you can do it. Keep your questions coming in. I think Louise has got a couple of answers for you now. <laughs> Uh, so we've just got time for answers some more of the questions that we've been uh, having all evening on the live stream chat and Ian and Rob are back in the studio to answer some of those. So Ian, first of all, a uh, question that's come through, how does the centre help prepare their students for the working world? Everything we do prepares them for the working world, um, you know, right from the first morning of the first day that our students are with us. Um, they are being asked to commit acts of journalism, basically. And you know that's that's built into the DNA of the program. We think that the best way to learn how to be a journalist is to go and be a journalist mm -hmm. and actually go and talk to real people about real stories and produce real output. And you know I think that the the success of our programs is in the fact that our students can go into the working world and feel at home. And I've, I've heard of quite a few students give that message tonight that they felt comfortable on their first day in their job and I think that was you know that's that's feels to me like one of our one of our greatest strengths. Absolutely another question Rob uh, that's come through which stems on quite nicely from that one what opportunities are there throughout the course to do actual journalism? Actual well, actual journalism is our stock in trade mm. so everything they do is actual journalism but I guess that what, what they might be asking about is, is our links out to industry. Every student that we have on our accredited programmes gets work experience with the Kent Messenger Group who are mm -hmm. very close friends of ours at the centre. Um, they get the opportunity to do paid internships at KMTV and that has happens for our undergraduate and postgraduate students, getting their, an opportunity to pitch stories, be part of a real live newsroom and to come on the sofa here with you um, and, and to tell their stories. Um, but we also have competitive scholarships and internships. So we have a great relationship, for example, with Sky News, who offer an undergraduate scholarship every year, which is worth money for the student, but more importantly, a month's experience in their newsrooms. And the same with the Daily Mail. Um, and, and we have great opportunities with the BBC and with others. So if you come here, you're you're practicing it every day but you'll also get an opportunity to, to sell that story out and have it in the real world which is important and i think it's, it's, it's worth pointing out that the core team we we've, we've all come from mm. the, uh, the those of us who teach in journalism have all come from journalism backgrounds so we have spent our, our professional lives in and around newsrooms mm. um, and our connections to the you know our networks throughout the industry are still fantastic so we are able to help students knock on the right doors you know, when it comes to looking for placements and looking for jobs. Absolutely, and uh, one thing that going back to admissions, which we spoke about a bit earlier on, there is that selection day. Someone's asked <laughs> um, how best to prepare if they do apply. Um, well, the best way to apply is to consume lots of journalism. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to be asking you about: is what journalism do you like? What stories have you read recently that you, you have found interesting? And so, the more newspapers you've read, the more um, journalism consumed online, on television, on, on, on radio and in digital formats, the, um, you know, the better prepared you're going to be. The rest of, the inter the rest of that process is, is really nothing to be frightened of because what we're just seeing is whether you've got the core English grammar skills essentially that mean that we know that we can prepare you to get through the professional NCTGA exams. Um, and then for the interview we're just going to be having a chat, we're going to be talking to you about you know what you're hoping to get out of it, where you see your career trajectory going, um, and you know we'll be asking you, uh, you know, a little bit about your academic background as well. But we're just trying to find out, you know, what kind of journalist we think you might make. And I think it's important to say that a lot of a lot of people when they apply, particularly if they're applying at 18, they've got no idea what kind of journalist they want to be yet. Um, a lot of people come to us just knowing that they they have some kind of spark of curiosity about them. They they, they think they might want to be involved in telling stories in some way. Don't feel that you're we're going to try and put you on a track at 18 where you're going to be the next Andrew Noir or Laura Kunzberg. Um, you know, if you if you enjoy telling stories, if you're curious about the world, then that's what we're looking for. Uh, one question that has come through is how many students do you take each year? 
So one of the strengths of us as a department is that we teach in very s in, in, in university terms what are very small groups. Mm -hmm. So for our, our undergraduate program, the maximum number we'll take um, on the uh, within a year's intake is 40. Um, so that gives you the kind of the ballpark figure. We uh, sometimes don't take that many. Um, with the MA programs, um, the number of students on those courses tends to be around 15 to 20. Our year in journalism program is growing, so it's the first year that we've, we've run that. There are seven students on that this year, but we're expecting more next year. And then with the new um, TV and video production program, September 2020 will be the first intake, so it's quite hard to predict. Um, uh, but again, the, 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 the nature of that teaching is going to be in relatively small groups. Absolutely, and in terms of where some of the recent students have gone to work, or can you give us a couple of examples? So, I mean, we've got graduates from 2019 already working at the Daily Mail, obviously at the Kent Messenger Group, at the BBC, at um, Sky News. Sky News. Um, where they're doing freelancing for, for uh, websites that cover travel and leisure. We've got someone at the Daily Express covering the celebrity beat. Um, and these are people who have graduated within the last few months. Um, the, yeah. the wider network is literally everywhere. Ever-expanding yeah. CFJ network of, um, of our students who are out there in, in newsrooms all around the world. And that's one of the, you know, that is one of the nice things about the Centre for Journalism family is it, it really does extend globally now. You know, one of the things that surprised us, perhaps, uh, from that very those early beginnings, was how many international students we would we would end up um, attracting, and you know that, that that sort of sense that they are out there, and we and we do keep in touch with them as well. You know, we we keep in touch with the with our students, uh, you know, partly because we're interested, and partly because we know that they are going to be useful in many cases to the generations of students that are coming behind them. And one other question that we've had is how approachable, how approachable the lecturers are. <laughs> well, we would say we're friendly. I, think. <laughs> I mean, hopefully what, what you're getting a sense of tonight is, is what makes the centre special is that we're a family. And we have small groups, partly out of design, because we want to know all of our students personally, one-to-one. -one. We want to understand what their strengths are, what they want to achieve, and we want to help them do it. And we have this fantastic open-door policy at the centre where our students come to us to talk about not only the work that we're setting them, but also just the things that they enjoy, the things that they want to achieve in their careers, or just what happened in the news over the weekend because they just fancy a chat. And, and that's what makes this such a special place, I'd have to say, to work, but also to study. We try and, we try and approach it because we've come from that professional newsroom background, we try to approach the relationship between us and the students as kind of editor-reporter relationships, so um, rather than sort of lecturer-student, mm. if that makes sense. So they're tending to come to us um, to, you know, to talk about stories and to talk about the journalism that they want to do and the problems that they might have in you know, thinking about a story or, or they're getting blocked because they can't get to the person that they need to get to. Um, and we're sort of, you know, helping them find, a ra find their ways around those kind of roadblocks that you often get. Um, and, the, you know, the same goes for the, the lecturers in the more academic disciplines too. Absolutely. In terms of the entry requirements, I'm sure lots of people will be wondering what they are uh, from coming from, from school. What, what are the entry requirements? So we have a, a kind of guideline requirements for the journalism undergrad programme, which is BBB at A-level. But um, I think as we were mentioning earlier in the, when we were talking about that admissions process, what we are able to do is tailor offers to individual students. Because, we've, because you've done the test with us and because we've sat down and chatted to you, mm -hmm. and because now we're getting students from all sorts of different academic backgrounds coming to us, um, we're able to tailor an offer that is appropriate for that student. Um, for the for the new TV and uh, digital video production um, program, the same applies. The guideline offer the yeah the guideline requirement for that is BBC at A level. And um, one last question: Someone's asked why should they study journalism as a degree and just not go into it after university? I mean, we've touched upon lots of things like the NCTJ, lots of things that do yeah. help you get into a career, but why shouldn't you just go 
do a traditional university degree and then uh, go into the industry afterwards? I mean, the, the simple truth of it is that the number of opportunities there are for people going straight into journalism without having done some training before are a lot fewer than they used to be. So that was, that was how I got into journalism. I, I did a degree in something else and I was accepted into a, into a newspaper training scheme. But more often than not these days, employers want you to have a degree and they want you to have an NCTJ qualification before they take you on. Um, so the reason to come and do a degree like this is to get both the degree and that NCTJ qualification at the same time, but also then to spend three years building up a portfolio of stunning journalism um, under our guidance, um, which um, will we'll sell you to an editor and make you stand out from all the other people who haven't got quite got the same qualifications or, or maybe are doing similar courses elsewhere but don't have quite the same opportunities to get out there and, and really produce amazing stuff. Well, fantastic. I think that's, that's all we've got time mm. for this evening. But thank you very much for joining us uh, for that Q&A. Well, that's all from the Centre for Journalism's first virtual open day. We hope that's given you some insight into life in the busy departments at the University of Kent. Our on-demand version of this live stream will be available on the CFJ's YouTube channel shortly, so you can catch up on any parts of it that you missed. Thanks for watching.